damage to the sleds this happened last night this is we were about to stop brent ran over a rock there's rocks all over the place hidden in the snow and it's really hard to spot them and just unlucky one happened to be sticking up enough to basically take out all these supports so a couple like i showed before um, a couple of the napus have an extra support underneath and it was the rock was at the perfect right height to take the one off the back take the one off the front and then rip this one up also i mean it must have hit i don't know where it hit on this one but this one's now and you can see on the side here it tore this up so a bit of damage and uh get this fixed up hopefully it shouldn't be an issue but yeah unfortunate situation After two weeks on the road, we've covered less than half the distance between Yellowknife and Cambridge Bay and are still in the Northwest Territories. Good morning. So last night we made some good progress for the first time in a long time. We did about 65 kilometers in like less than three hours. We left pretty late because we were doing repairs on the common takes and that kind of thing. So from like 8.30 to 11 or something like that, we were driving and did 65 clicks and made it back into Nunavut. So we're finally back home in the right territory now at least. So plan for today is we're just gonna start motoring. We're off the old ice road route now. You know, the ice road this year only goes to Divik and Akati. In the past, it's gone all the way to Kentwedo. So we were following that old route, but now we've branched off east and we're headed up to Nose Lake and gonna try and pick our way through some hills to the Goose Lake camp. This is like the peak. We're like going up the mountain and we're gonna peak and then come, hopefully come down the other side or get turned around. It's about 205 kilometers to Goose Lake. So, you know, if we can keep up some good uh, momentum, then we can get that done in two days pretty easily. But uh, there's always stuff that crops up and, and is gonna end up delaying us. So we'll see, we'll see how it goes, but that's the goal. Bird shot, okay. Yeah. okay. We're trying from the hip just so I got a sense of the kick first, I think. Pump it out. Woo! Woo you almost got it and you aimed low, right? But so it's not it's not too far off then, but that yeah. was a little closer. Yeah. So, so I was aiming a little low from that. You would just aim like two feet below sure. it. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. But I always put uh, with this shotgun. Yeah. I always put two of these bird shot first, right? First for yeah. warning, and then this one for when. Then the heavy. <laughs> close to you. you <laughs> yeah. Know, right. You gotta, you gotta do some work here. <laughs> All loaded up. We're pushing farther into Nunavut today. Today or tomorrow, I think is the day that we find out if we can actually get through here to Goose Lake. So I'm getting a little antsy, but uh, we're gonna see how it goes. It's beautiful weather, it's nice and warm. And um, we got another day basically today and like half of tomorrow for this weather to last. And then it's gonna get all snowy and shitty. So we'll see, we're pushing through. We're gonna see how far we can make it. We're getting into bear territory now. I got the guns out. We're gonna start keeping a rifle in the tent. Um, both of us are carrying guns, so it's fucking showtime, baby. Time to make some miles.
It is eight in the morning. I had to make a tough decision today. We are abandoning the Goose Lake route. I don't know if you can see in the video here, but we're coming up on this super rocky terrain right out here. It's just one big boulder field. And this is really just the edge of where it gets ugly between here and Goose Lake. We're so close. We made 100 kilometers yesterday and got less than 100 kilometers to go until the camp. And some of that's on lakes, but it's just looking too ugly for us. Couple other factors, you know, if we had more time and if there was not weather rolling in, then we would just go as far as we possibly can and we'd turn around. But because you can see there's some cloud cover already rolling in, this wasn't here half an hour ago. By, by noon, it's supposed to start snowing. So we're trying to get some miles on before it's whiteout conditions. But if that was not happening, and if we had more time on our hands, we could probably just really spend some time trying to pick our way through, but we're just two machines. So if we break some suspension, if we break the common ticks again, going through these boulders, we're absolutely hooped. And if we get stuck in those boulders in whiteout conditions, we're also hooped. So we're aboarding the Goose Lake route and we're going up the Mara River. We've got about 220 clicks to Bathurst Inlet. So we are gonna mosey up that way and try and get as far as we possibly can today before we're whited out and you know, hopefully get within striking range of civilization and the road home. So that's the game plan. We're almost packed up and we're gonna hit the road. Update, we are making good time on the Mara River. Also the weather is holding as you can see which is fantastic news. It's like two in the afternoon now, and uh, they were calling for snow by this time. We're about halfway up the Mara to where we cut over and go over some hills over to Bathurst. So we're making incredibly good time. Um, we're burning lots of fuel. So we're just stopping and uh, doing a bit of a fuel up here. Get that done and then get back on the road. And I think the target for today, I mean like, fuck, we could, if we could make it all the way to Bathurst, that would be sweet. But target at least for today is to get this river portion done. There's like 200 kilometers. You know, like we've been uh, making good time. And if we get that done today, then that's like primo. Everything around here is like this crazy moonscape, like boulder field kind of stuff. So we tried to take a couple shortcuts, didn't work so well. We also got sucked off onto some little, uh, sucked off, that sounds kind of gross. <laughs> sucked down some little fucking gully by mistake and had to turn back. But uh, other than that, it's been pretty smooth. So I get some fuel in her, get going. I was making my way through this treacherous boulder field. Over here is the river, and you can see all this old overflow on it. And anyways, making our way through this bullshit, and like 50 meters up there, I turn back and I realize the commentary's gone. Come back, have a look, fucking tow rope's fucked. And this is the culprit. <laughs> so some slack in the tow rope cut a, cut a rock, and you can see the shape of the rock. It's just fucking wedged it in there, and uh, broke it off at the chain, actually. That's a new one. When I was fucking around with my tow rope, Brent heard some wolves howling. Pulled out the binoculars and just over here, there are five wolves making their way over toward us. And then actually we saw another one up on a hill up this direction. And they're howling. There's gotta be a den over there somewhere. You can hear the pups kind of squealing and playing around and whatnot. But um, yeah, five wolves just right about here. This is gonna have to get fixed. I think I've broken this probably 15 times on this trip so far. Jesus Christ. We're about three quarters of the way to the exit of this river. Beautiful river, actually. Beautiful drive. A little sketchy. See, 
feels sketchy. I don't know if it's actually sketchy. I don't know if you know if it's sketchy until you fucking actually go in. <laughs> in the water. Oh fuck, did the... The knock came undone? Oh, okay, I got a, I got a better strategy here, I think. Fuck, I might need those uh, channel locks again, quick. It likes to happen when you're close to town. Yeah. <laughs> last, last hill and you jerk it and then bust. Yeah. I don't even know if I remember what town looks like. Let's see if that holds. There you go, thank you. of the Mara River. Fortunately, it's real steep. I mean, everywhere else is just a, a wall, rocky wall. So this is the only place to get out, but it's steep. I'm using my shitty phone, by the way, because everything else is dead. My friend's going first, his sled's lighter, and he's just gonna rip it. So like the name of the game here is speed. To make things not easier is that all these bushes and stuff here are gonna be hard to get through and they're bumpy, so you can't like, there's no big long run out here to build speed. So we gotta go through all this bumpy shit. My sled is so fucking heavy, so we'll see. We're gonna see. Depending on how easy it is for Brent, we might just unload half my load. Just like I said, mine's fucking heavy as shit, so. See how she goes! Brent's coming in, but. He's stuck at the bottom. Already. Things are not going good. Alright, he just got caught on those rocks there, so. He's gonna pull around, circle around on the river. Start from the other side. Over there, buzz across, up right here, and then go try and make it up there. Here he comes. I'm really scared. I've got to freaking send it. And there's bumps. There's a steep hill at the end. This is going to be sketchy. Holy fuck. I haven't been this nervous this whole trip.
she was struggling. She was spinning the track there at the end. Oh my god. <laughs> I fucking almost tipped her there too on a rock. Oh my god. Fuck, I wish I had had the GoPro on in that last section. We basically got, I made it up the, the rest of the way. So I'm at the top. I'm at the top of the mountain here. And uh, Brent was close behind me, is not anymore. It's a long way down. I don't know if I want to. I'm going to give him a few more minutes and then see what the fuck's going on. He's stuck somewhere. Way down here is the river. This is the river. This is where we came up from. Update. We are making our way down slowly. Brand right now is stuck. We just came through this like narrow little gully area. And I'm now on the side of this hill. The way it was described, there was like one big hill that you could just send your comma take down if you wanted or use brakes or whatever. But either we missed the big hill or it was just misrepresented how many little fucking twisty and turnies there were. So it was coming down through with this little lip here. Bit of soft snow and hidden. Right in between my tracks, it looks like my common thick went right over it. This fucking gnarly rock, look at that. Look at that. And it's just shredded, like, just totally shredded the side of his ski here. Like, look at that, all the way to the front. V broke, one loop broke, so he's gonna have to rebraid that. And I'm just gonna say fuck it and disconnect my sled, see if I can get all the way, all the way to the bottom, because there's so much fucking dick baggery, eh? Yeah, it looks so like It's it. just getting ridiculous, so. Okay, the long and the short of it is we got mixed up somehow at the last waypoint that we were given for the path through this side. There's a waypoint and the instructions were go here and then follow the set of cliffs. And we got there and the waypoint was on a lake and there's cliffs on one side and we followed those. And those were not the right cliffs. And they took us to the top of the hill so we were like, it seems right. It seems like there's a way down here based on the topo. And we know that people have done this, right? We know that like there is a way down. So we kept pushing and turns out this is definitely not the way. So I came all the way down. I'm like probably fucking six clicks away from Brent. He's way up in the hills. There's a moose over there, by the way. You come down here and it looks flat, but that's the river running along there the burnside river which the mara river flows into that flat section ends with steep banks you can't get off it and then you can't get around this hill because there's a, a stream that forms a gully right at the end so you're totally boxed in the only way you can really do it is rip it up that hill somehow it's going to be a bitch and then you can just send it down the other side head off that way 
to Bathurst. It's a fuck show, and we're about to see the f dick baggery that I had to come through to get down here. It's ridiculous. If I get stuck at any point on the way back up, I'm fucked. We went the wrong way. There is, we can't get back up. Like there's no way. Yeah. There is a way down. There's there's some bullshit though. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's some dick baggery, but wow. not worse necessarily than what we've seen, but a couple areas where we should probably just let the sleds go. You think it's doable though? I think it's doable. Yeah, yeah. Okay. There's, it's gonna, it's gonna take time. It avoids rocks for the most part. So like, okay. yeah. like hopefully stuff shouldn't get too broken and uh, Right from here, where do we go? Like, take that corner and come down this way then, or? Hop on my machine. We'll go just look at this first little one here. Yeah, so number one, we just send the sleds down there. Stop that. and send them down, no yeah. problem. That yeah, good, it, it does look good, yeah. It looks good for that, we'll drop lots by there. You basically get cliffed out, except where there's that patch of snow right on the edge. Yeah. You can go up and over that, and then uh, down to the other side, and there's some more over there, but anyways. Let's Start, start with this one, I guess. Ooh, was, there. That was my first thought. Yeah. Just continue down there. Yeah. This gets got more and more of a gully and dumps into the burn side oh, okay. before it even gets flat. So, okay, yeah. let's motor. until I tell you that you can do that. All right, 
hold on, let me get the fucking camera <laughs> for this one. Oh boy, my pride and joy is kicking her loose. Oh, she's turning the right way. Don't hit those rocks, please. Don't hit those rocks. Slow, slow, slow. Oh, fuck. It didn't look too bad. No. I'm going to turn this off because we are low on gas. One, two. Uh-oh, she's going right into a fucking big rock. Right over it. <laughs> you see it pass clean over that big rock there? Okay, I'm gonna see the damage on mine. Fuck, man. Seems pretty okay. Man, she seems good. Perfect. Built for that too. <laughs> Holy f designed for it or what? Jesus Christ. Fucking manufactured and fucking <laughs> engineered to rock. Rock climbing. Yeah. Can we hear lift and lift? Yeah. Yeah. One, two. Oh. This is just tenuous. No, we did not do this the right way. We went the wrong way somehow. But we're learning, goddammit. the better sand I think or not because it's gonna go whoop fucking way up on those rocks I think this is a drive actually I'm just gonna drive this one I'm just gonna do it I'm driving this one baby Coming at you, just get out of its way. And yeah, I think can fold pretty good down those. Yeah, it goes good. Yeah, you bet. You just get a feel for the the speed it yeah. wants to go away. Eh? Like the biggest thing for me is like I see, especially making turns on a hill. Yeah. I see it going to stuff that I don't want, and then I just snap it away from it. You yeah, know, like, yeah. You see it uh, kind of veering off, and just give it a light yeah, and, yeah. and recorrect it. Yeah. We were coming down from that little twisty turny bit, my GoPro died, and uh, made it through that no problem. But then the Comatic wanted to keep moving, so I had to go with it. And then I came up on this icy spot, and it was going off to the side, the same way, same way Brent's is going. And I tried to tug it over, but I got caught on the ice. Mine jumped off here. My sled was over here. I got bucked off this way. Nice. Anyways, sled didn't tip. I got thrown off. Comet that came to rest here, all fine and dandy. 
and the sled's all fine and dandy. I'm fine and dandy. The moose is just behind this hill right here. Brent is locked and loaded. And we're gonna go sneak probably up and around and try and come down on it. There he is, there he is. Okay, you see that dark line coming down on the far hill, like beyond in the background? Yeah. There's that dark line that comes down and hits the top of this hill. Oh, right there. Yeah. yeah, there, I see him. You can see us. I got him. Right on. Right on. Yeah. yeah. Let's go check it out, see if he's down there. Yeah, right. right. Make sure everything's good. Dope, man. Cool. We got Brent sled up, and down here, right here, is where we're going. That's Bathurst Inlet. My first time ever seeing Bathurst Inlet. I'm so excited. It's uh, four in the afternoon. Brent's just dealing with that moose there and I just blasted up the hill and it went really good so I'm gonna go get my sled and then check in with Brent and then probably tow a f***ing cometic over there and start setting up camp I guess in one of the cabins look what I just found as I was making my way over to Bathurst these things are so cool I've got one of these at the lake are they wide gauge they're wide gauge that's so cool and they got wheels on them instead of skis. They got front wheels. That's so cool. Look at these fucking things. Okay, update. So it was a lot farther than it looked. And it's all through this kind of crap. Like just super, super soft snow. And I got the commentic stuck. Super stuck. And uh, I broke one of the loops i knew it was gonna happen i'm so glad it didn't happen up on the mountain but one of the loops broke so i'm gonna fix that dig that shit out get this comatic over to bathurst both of our machines are on like their last tank right now my i have half a tank brent has less than half a tank and that's all the gas that we have so we need to get to the mla the marine lay down area to get gas asap bathurst number one that's my number one goal fixed it Fixed the loop, got it unstuck, and just grabbing some garbage because we don't litter out here. We do not litter. Good morning. It is day 18 of our 12 day trip, and we finally made it to Bathurst Inlet. So we're staying in a cabin now, as you can see. We're cooking up some food, making some water, and we're gonna get packed up, kind of divide all the gear that was in the two comatics up in such a way where my gear is on my comatic, Brent's gear is on his comatic, and then we're pretty much just gonna boogie home. Brent's machine ran out of gas about like three clicks out of town yesterday, um, and my machine is at two bars, so we've gotta make it about 30 kilometers to the marine laden area where we're getting fuel. Once we do that, it's pretty much a straight shot home. It's probably a like 12 hour drive, eh? So, yeah, something like that. It's, it's gonna be long, but for the time being, we're gonna take our time here and eat some food, rearrange some stuff, get some stuff thawed out, dried, and then boogie. The black label made it all the way. We're giving it to our buddy Anthony here, who's very kindly let us stay in his house. Showed up here at the MLA and they got a drum waiting for us. Look at that. Hey. How nice of them. Premium gasoline. So, just gotta pump it into our machines and jerry cans and be off. Thank you guys. Looked at the gas situation and that one drum that these guys gave us is probably going to be a little bit tight in terms of getting us home. We've got a long way to go 
and my machine's all right on gas. Brent's is like a little bit not as good on gas, so it would have been really tight and we probably wouldn't have made it. So we talked to the guys and they're gonna get us an extra like three, four jerry cans kind of thing, which is awesome of them. We're just here in this pump room, warming up for a little bit until they come back with our gas and then we're gonna head off. Fuel is secured. So we're gonna be able to make it home. Unfortunately, the weather has turned. We were driving back in these whiteout conditions and there's big drifts everywhere. And the snow is sort of inconsistent. So some of the drifts are hard and some of them are like really soft snow. So it's almost impossible to tell what's coming your way in terms of bumps. And I was just going all over the place. Like, you know, can't see anything. And uh, yeah, kind of sketchy. So we're not gonna be driving in that. We are going to be waiting until night. Anyways, we're gonna get some food going and get some tea going and hang out for a bit and then get going later on tonight. Okay, update. It is one in the morning. We're almost ready, almost packed up. We both had to do repairs on our commentics. I had to fix a bunch of stuff with my tow ropes. Brent actually had to retie a napu. I'm so tired. We're gonna end the trip on an interesting note. All nighter driving 350 kilometers <laughs> anyways super stoked this has all been so fucking awesome and uh yeah this is really this is it okay it is three in the morning we have both of the sleds packed up and we're really just racing the weather here so we're trying to get back before the storm hits tomorrow and uh we get stranded for like five days so wish us luck Another update, it is one in the afternoon, which means we've been going for 10 hours here. Still a ways to go and no sign of this weather rolling in, so we lucked out again, which is fantastic. There's a little like hunting cabin here kind of thing. We stopped and, and had a coffee and had a bite, and this truly is the last leg of our journey, Abraham. Eh, yes, sir. Yeah, it's been a long time coming, but we're finally gonna make it, I think. Yeah. Just another, but 100 clicks. 100 100, 120 clicks, something like that, and then we're home. Looking forward to it. We are about to set foot on the Arctic Ocean, leaving mainland Canada for the last time on this journey. We're making extremely good time. We have been driving for 12 hours three o'clock in the afternoon, but we made it. We've done over 300 kilometers, about 350 kilometers, something like that. And this is it, this last little hop over the Arctic Ocean, the D Strait to Cambridge Bay, back home. 
After months of preparation and 18 days spent on the Arctic Tundra, we finally made it home. Countless unforeseen hurdles before and during the expedition, as well as many of our own mistakes, meant that we arrived home two weeks later than planned. But we arrived home with a wealth of new experience and knowledge that could not have been gained in any other way. I feel immense gratitude to have embarked on this incredible journey with someone as knowledgeable as Brent, and to have had an introduction to the incredible skill set that is required to safely navigate this harsh environment. I feel privileged to have seen these beautiful places, which have been traveled and watched over by indigenous peoples for thousands of years, and I recognize that I have a duty to respect this land as a visitor. I look forward to whatever adventures await here on top of the world, but until then, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.